Hi everyone, I'm Bob Grip. Coming up next on the News 10 Early Edition, renovation work at this soon-to-be magnet school must begin again. Following a weekend fire that officials are calling arson, we'll bring you team coverage, including a look at the magnet school concept, how many students are trying to get into the limited seating program. Also tonight, tragedy on Government Boulevard. And after a three-day search, the body of a drowning victim is recovered off Dauphin Island. Rob Roblin tells us that the skies will remain partly sunny this weekend in sports. A sad day for the Crimson Tide football program. It's all next in the News 10 Early Edition. Hey, so the kids want a pepperoni and you want a combo. No problem. I'll deliver you a combo and a pepperoni at one low price. Pick up the phone. I know the neighborhood. The award-winning News 10 is next, only on Channel 10. WALA-TV Mobile. And now, from your live news leader, this is the News 10 Early Edition. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Grip. Fire investigators tonight say they've turned up more clues into yesterday's arson fire at Sidney Phillips Middle School, including things like a broken window and an empty metal container. To begin our team coverage of the crime, Renee Diles brings us back to the scene as investigators found more clues. Fire inspectors have collected enough evidence at Sidney Phillips School to not only determine the blaze was deliberately set, but they also have some suspects. We've got some names of some people that they feel like definitely needs to be talked to. We've seen some signs in here, it looks like vandalism, and it, it may be a, an act of some kids, or it may be an act of a former employee or somebody that's mad with the system, and they figure this was a way of getting back. Three firefighters were injured battling the blaze, which started around 5 o'clock yesterday. Sidney Phillips Middle School is undergoing renovation for the new magnet program set to begin here in September. Thomas Engel is the supervisor for the renovation project. He saw the damage for the first time this morning. It's pretty heartbreaking and devastating to, that everything we've done has gone up in a couple hours. Some of the parents whose children are enrolled in the magnet school say they're disappointed but not discouraged. You see it, though, as a detour to, uh, to a better school, and the commitment of the parents and of the staff is going to be even stronger now that this has happened. The cleanup work will begin this week, and while school officials don't know when this wing will be ready for use, they are sure of one thing. The Phillips Magnet School will open in September. Renee Dowles, News 10. Renovation work on the building was 95% complete. Phillips and Council Traditional are the two newest magnet schools for the upcoming year. As we continue our team coverage tonight, Byron Date takes a closer look at the three-year experiment, which could determine where and what kind of education your child receives. Magnet schools are not something new to the state of Alabama, but they are relatively new to Mobile. Dr. Lee Taylor, shown here with part of her administration team, is the incoming principal at Council Traditional School. She's looking forward to challenging minds at an early age plus a little more. Our emphasis will be on communication skills. We'll be the only school in the county that has foreign language for elementary students, along with uh, an extended day program, which has been something parents have been interested in, especially the working parent. At Shaw High School this morning, Phillips preparatory teachers were themselves getting prepared for the upcoming year. Magnet school teachers are hand-picked, which underscores the commitment of everyone involved. We're here to direct, develop our own curriculum and design the types of things that we think these students at the preparatory school do need to further their education with the college preparatory type courses going on through high school. We know that we're on the firing line to perform, that we have to give our all and give not 100%, but more than 100%, that we have to be the very best that this county can, can have or offer. Over the next three years, there will be many interested observers in the magnet school system. Not only parents, teachers, and students, but the federal courts as well. Because if the system works, it could be allowed to grow and prosper. But if it doesn't, the courts could then move that busing, which is divisive and costly, could be the only way to get students into the inner city schools. But it's going to work. You can put money in the bank on it. Byron Day, News 10. Uh, next year, Old Shell Road Elementary and Dunbar Middle Schools will become magnet schools specializing in fine arts. Chickasaw Elementary and K.J. Clark Middle School will enter the program in 1991, concentrating on science. That was Byron Day and Renee Diles with team coverage of Magnet Schools. Along Highway 90 this morning, it was a parent's worst nightmare come true. Troopers tell us 10-year-old James Schron apparently lost control of his bike along the busy highway 
and ran into the path of a truck. James died instantly. To compound the tragedy, James' mother just happened to drive by the scene when she saw her son's mangled bike. James would have been 11 tomorrow. Coast Guard officials today recovered the body of a mobile fisherman missing since Friday. 35-year-old Carl Kim and two others were three miles north of Dauphin Island when a barge hit their 20-foot boat. Kim fell overboard. The others tried to rescue him, but couldn't reach him. Now, it could have been a tragic scene at the Alabama State Docks this morning. Police, firefighters, and members of the hazardous materials team helped contain a chemical leak. Hydrochloric vapor seeped out of a rail car that arrived last week from Puerto Rico. Luckily, vapor was the only thing in the car. The only danger as far as this particular product being hydrochloric acid would cause you would be if you were to spill some of it on your skin, on your clothing, and that type of thing. The leaking rail car and several others should have had a warning sign on them telling rail workers about the danger. They didn't. Still to come tonight on the News 10 Early Edition, we'll preview tomorrow's Republican runoff election for State Senate Seat 32 and the election for mayor of Mobile. In a new twist, this candidate is about to throw his hat into the ring again. He will watch her. He will watch her. Take a look. Watch every day. You love to play. He will watch her. He will watch her. Just spin and win. Check it out. The wheel is hotter than ever. He will watch her. Join your friends and play along with America's favorite, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune only on Channel 10. If I could take this quarter and turn it into $50, would you believe it? What if I turned it in to $100? Tomorrow morning, take a quarter and call Alpha. I'm not sure exactly how much money you'll save on your car insurance, but I'll promise you one thing. It just might be the highest yielding quarter you'll ever invest. My buyers get set to save at your hometown Chevy Geo dealer. Effective immediately, get the lowest financing ever, the biggest rebates ever, and the lowest payments of the year. All you need is a job, license, social security number, and no bad credit. Now get set for more great news from your hometown Chevy Geo dealer. Looking for import quality without the import price? Say so long, Honda, Nissan, Toyota, and Hyundai. Say hello, Geo. And buy a brand new Geo for a lot less, as little as $129 a month. Make no down payment, get cash back to $1,400. But hurry to your hometown Chevy Geo dealer. There are now five candidates in the race for mayor of Mobile. Tomorrow, there will be six. In fact, this newest candidate, Mike Dow, is already in the race for a city council seat. Now, tonight, Lance Williams is with the live eye at City Hall to sort things out for us. Lance? Bob, the race for City Hall is getting more complicated tonight. All indications are that Mike Dow will drop out of the city council race against Jane Baxter and throw his hat into the ring for mayor. Less than two months ago, Mike Dow jumped into the District 6 City Council race. The millionaire co-founder of QMS, he had the time and the money to wage a no-holds-barred campaign. But now Mike Dow has apparently changed his mind. A source very close to the candidate tells me that Dow will announce tomorrow for mayor. I've also learned that Dow's campaign people have already notified officials at City Hall of the intended change. Mike Dow had no comment. And Jane Baxter, who is running against Dow, says she'll only believe it when she sees it. Well, she'll find out tomorrow, which is the last day to qualify. I'm not going to count on anything until tomorrow at 5.01. But until such time, we're going. We're going for it. We're going to treat it like we've got a hard opponent, and we're going to treat it like it's just a tough race. And Lambert Mims, who is running for mayor, welcomes Dow's competition. Uh, the more the merrier. Uh, let him have at it. It just indicates to me that there are more and more people who are interested in a change at City Hall. And I have just learned that late this afternoon, Mike Dow did come here to City Hall to tell Arthur Outlaw 
The Dow will be joining Outlaw in the mayor's race. Now, several calls to Outlaw's office and campaign headquarters were never answered by the mayor. However, I am told that Outlaw asked Dow not to enter the mayor's race. Bob? Now, I understand that Dow has been a supporter of Mayor Outlaw in the past. Is that right? That's right. Another interesting twist in this whole story is that Dow has uh, contributed $500 to Outlaw's campaign. Maybe he'll ask for his money back. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Thank you. Lance Williams with the Live Eye at City Hall. Now, tomorrow's Election Day in Baldwin County and part of Mobile County. It's the Republican runoff for the District 32 state Senate seat pitting Walter Penry against Albert Lipscomb. Baldwin County reporter Alan Green gives us a look at the two men. The candidates are on the road, and both campaign headquarters are busy trying to convince voters of the differences between the two candidates. And there are differences. The election features political insider against newcomer, a longtime Republican against a new Republican. Both men are lifelong residents of Baldwin County. Walter Penry is the insider and new Republican. He served the past 11 years in the House of Representatives. Penry thinks that gives him a strong edge in this election. Key issue, I think, is who can best represent us at this time. And I feel like with my background that I can, since I have had 11 years of experience and, and known among the House and Senate members. However, Penry was elected to the House as a Democrat. He jumped to the Republican Party just three months ago. Some think that switch will work against him. Lipscomb says he's chosen not to play up that weakness in this campaign. Fact, I mean, people know it, and if they're concerned and interested, they're well aware of the timing of the change. If they support it and feel like it's best and best for our state, they'll vote that way. If there's some reservations and questions, I believe it will be reflected in tomorrow's vote. Lipscomb is 21 years younger than Penry and has no elected experience. However, he has been active in the Republican Executive Committee in Baldwin County for four years. The candidates are similar on several issues, but disagree on abortion and a state lottery. Lipscomb strongly opposes abortion and wants a state law to reflect that, and he's dead set against a state lottery. Penry opposes abortion as a form of birth control, but wants to leave a woman with some choice. On the lottery issue, he favors a statewide vote to let the people decide if they want it. This is the Nicholson Center polling place in Daphne. The results from the first Republican primary three weeks ago are still posted here, and they show a very low turnout. And all about 10% of the registered voters in the district voted in that primary. Now, the candidates are hoping for a better turnout than that tomorrow, but with only two candidates, most experts aren't optimistic. In Daphne, Alan Green News 10. The polls will be open in Baldwin County from 8 until 7, and in Mobile County from 7 to 7. A former Gratic campaign aide says the one-time attorney general knew about and approved a plan to bug party headquarters during the 1986 governor's race. The admission came today from this man, Andy Yeomans, a private investigator who once worked for Gratic. Yeomans and former Gratic aide Don Beckers of Mobile both pleaded guilty today in Montgomery to plea bargain charges stemming from the incident. Yeomans and Beckers were accused of using state-owned equipment to eavesdrop at state Democratic Party headquarters and at a phone bank operated by Gratic's opponent, Bill Baxley. Gratic couldn't be reached for comment today. Well, you have to dodge more afternoon thunderstorms this week. Rob Roplin's up next with your forecast. And the calm after the storm. Peace returns to Dauphin Island after its biggest event of the year. How much money did merchants reel in from the visitors? Attention Honda Prelude buyers from Florida, Alabama, and Mississippi. At Treadwell Honda, Honda Motor Company's delivery headquarters for the summer of 89, this week over 150 Hondas are in stock, and Preludes will be sold at discounts up to $2,500. Plus, Treadwell Honda doesn't force unwanted options on your new Honda, so your new Prelude with air, power windows, power mirrors, power sunroof, and cruise only cost $15,788. This is proof that Treadwell Honda's new management team is ready to deal. Treadwell Honda, Airport Boulevard, Mobile. Yes, it's that fabulous, funny face. When Lucille Ball laughed, we laughed. When she cried, we laughed. No matter what she did, we laughed. It's no wonder I Love Lucy is one of the most popular comedies in TV history. I get in that show, but the last thing I do. Own I Love Lucy, the collector's edition, uncut and professionally restored. Available on video cassette exclusively from the CBS Video Library. Order your first three-episode cassette for only $4.95. Enjoy Lucy at her side-splitting best. No, let me have it. Okay. Clowning around. Stomping more than grapes. Watch the queen of comedy earn her title again and again. Order now and you'll get the I Love Lucy book free. Have your credit card ready and call the number on your screen now.
Credit card orders only, please. Did you ever see my imitation of a Pekingese? A Pekingese? <laughs> Why do crystal lovers love summertime? Insulation! Not the kind in an attic or in a gentleman's overcoat. It's bloody hot in there! No, crystal lovers love our insulated squeeze bottle. Filled with a quart of ice-cold Coke for $1.59. That'll stay nice and cold no matter how high the mercury rises. Just drop a dollar fifty-nine and it's all yours. Refills just fifty-nine cents. So stay cool as a cucumber all summer. At Crystal, definitely different. After some scattered showers this weekend, back to normal hot and humid weather today. Yeah, but a little bit better today. We got a northerly flow of wind, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the humidity's been rather low for this time of year today. But that'll change in the next couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get humid again. You can guarantee yourself that'll happen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right now we got partly cloudy skies. The temperature 90. And look at that humidity. Only 45 percent. Not bad, huh? And the winds out of the northwest at seven miles an hour. The pressure 29.96. And it is falling, our picture from space. Here's what's going on, the front that gave us all the thunderstorms over the weekend, the scattered thunderstorms, some very, very heavy, is beginning to leave our area. And you can see a few clouds, but look at these thick clouds back in Arkansas and back in Oklahoma. Let's take a look at the southeast radar. First of all, you can see some heavy thunderstorms down in Florida. A few thunderstorms out in the Gulf, about 25 miles out. But back in Oklahoma and Arkansas, look at those big, big thunderstorms back there. And if we take a wider look at it, you can see in more detail, move through Arkansas, I mean Oklahoma today, into Arkansas as it moved through uh, Oklahoma. 90 per mile, mi 90 mile an hour winds in some of these thunderstorms. So very, very strong, severe weather with some damage reported in Oklahoma and Arkansas. Our high today, 91. The low this morning, 71. The record high, 101. That was set in 1883. And the record low of 65, 1886. Some will rise in the morning, 601. It will sub set at 756. A trace of rain since midnight, and the water temperature very warm, 85 degrees. Tomorrow, we're going to have another nice day. It's going to be warm. You can see a few thunderstorms scattered tomorrow, about a 20 to 30 percent chance. And then into Wednesday, once again, hot and humid. A uh, few thunderstorms, slight chance, about a 30 percent chance. The tides, a low tide at 11.50 p.m., and then a high tide at 12.59, 59 minutes afternoon tomorrow. They're the river stages. Boating forecast, partly cloudy, winds variable 5 to 10 knots tomorrow. And then the boating forecast, uh, the forecast for tonight, rather, partly cloudy skies with a low of 70. And then tomorrow, we're talking for partly cloudy skies, a slight chance of an afternoon thunderstorm, and warm, high of 90, low of 73. The next five days, uh, looks like we're going to be rain-free Tuesday and Wednesday, but those thunderstorms move back in Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and it's going to be hot and humid. You're right, back to normal. Back to normal, right. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. After a wet weekend, Dolphin Island's back to normal tonight, a day after the Alabama Deep Sea Fishing Rodeo. Business was great for trash collectors who worked through the night and into the morning to pick up the refuse left by the 100,000 people who jammed the resort over the weekend. Most of the trash was gone by 11 a.m. Now, in addition to all the cups and the cans left over, there was also plenty of rain at Dolphin Island. Did it dampen business for the local merchants? Consumer Watch reporter Ann Reynolds is back from the island to tell us if the rodeo brought big bucks or bad luck. Bob, they made thousands of dollars, and some merchants say they did even better than last year. It looked like bad weather on Friday night may have washed hopes of profits from this year's fishing tournament right into the Gulf. But Saturday, the sun came back, and so did business, leaving merchants dreaming big money. The ship and shore parking lot is nearly empty. Only a handful of customers have been in all day. It's a drastic change from just one day ago when the rodeo was in town. The store was so busy all weekend, Michelle Wilson needed five extra people to help her handle the rush. So what was it like in here Saturday? Very hectic, packed out, just uh, people all over. And everything's so easy. The cook and the rest of the workers here at the seafood galley are glad it's Monday. Like the other businesses on the island, they were serving the needs of the thousands of people at the rodeo over the weekend. The hard work paid off. The restaurant reeled in thousands of dollars in profit. Always helps. Anything we got coming to Dolphin Island, we appreciate it. Now, there were some businesses that had such a great weekend, they needed to take some time off. The Pelican Pub is closed today and Tuesday. Workers are still cleaning up and recovering after three days of nonstop partying. Co-owner Charlie Morgan says the fishing tournament meant big profits, but at a big price. Yeah. Could you use more weekends like this? From the business point, yes. From personal point, it just kills us. 
Besides rest, restaurants serving up lots of seafood, crawfish was the favorite. The convenience stores sold out almost every day on their supply of ice soda and the big money maker. Beer. Beer, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. When's the next big money making event for the island? The big event next is Labor Day weekend. It'll be big. Big. <laughs> That's the word for the day. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Coming up next in sports, we'll show you some of the unexpected fun Rob Roblin and Craig Price had at the Alabama Deep Sea Fishing Rodeo and the latest legal maneuvering in the Pete Rose gambling case. Those stories when we come back. At Dell Ships. It isn't hard to believe that you always get quality, clean stores, and variety, including the most popular national brands. What's so hard to believe is that you get it all at Del Champ's low discount prices. How can you tell when your teen has a drug or alcohol problem? Look for warning signs, like dramatic change in appearance, staying out late and running with a new, tough crowd, skipping school, taking money, and withdrawing from family. If you think your teen is in trouble with drugs or alcohol, Charter can help. We offer real solutions to your family's problems. Call Charter Hospital today, 1-800-634-0113. Get ready for the incredible. For the first time ever and for six days only, the Southern Olds family will double the factory's cash rebates on Cutlass, in addition to sale prices. Get $1,000 on top of $1,000, $1,250 on top of $1,250, $1,500 on top of $1,500. You get $2,000 cash back on Cutlass Sierra, $2,500 back on Cutlass Calais, $3,000 back on Cutlass Supreme. But you must act now. Double cash rebates end at midnight this Saturday, July 22nd, and will not be extended. Only at your Southern Olds family dealer. It's Circuit City's one and only Super Sale with super low prices throughout the store. This Panasonic camcorder with high-speed shutter and case included is just $10.99.97. And this Frigidaire 14 cubic foot no frost refrigerator is now $3.99.97. Don't miss the one and only Super Sale going on now at Circuit City, the intelligent choice. Terrible news tonight, really, about a player who could do so much. A uh, real tragedy that occurred over the weekend. Folks from Tuscaloosa to Ozark are still reeling from the tragic death of Dion McLeod this weekend. Now, Dion was a star defensive lineman from Ozark who had signed to play with Alabama. The tragedy was felt most in his hometown today. Mark Thornhill from our sister station, WSFA in Montgomery, was in Ozark today. The serenity of the water belies what took place here Saturday night. And that was a harrowing, tragic experience for five young men. McLeod and four of his friends were headed to a concert just beyond the pond here at a site called the Couch Sand Pits. Today, Dale County Coroner Earl Bankston told me the details. You see the trailer set up over here for the bands to be playing on. Uh -huh. And we feel that the young man saw all the lights and was going to make a, was going to head straight for it uh -huh. and didn't know the lake was here and they go off in it. Bankston said McLeod was sitting in the front seat on the passenger side. He was the first one out of the car getting on the hood, but he began shouting that he couldn't swim. A friend tried to help him, but McLeod's 6'5", 250-pound frame was too much for him. Ironically, McLeod drowned just about 10 feet from land. It hit the time real hard. People come up to me and talk to me about him. I, I couldn't say nothing because I was, you know, very upset about it. Well, just outstanding young man, you know, no problems. He's one of the yes or no sir kids that uh, worked real hard on the practice field, worked real hard during the ball game, and really, really was looking forward to going to the University of Alabama. You do feel like that they become members of your family, especially if they choose your school and your team, and you just get to where you love all of them. Like the playing field where Dion displayed his enormous football ability, there's a sense of emptiness now with his passing. In Ozark, Mark Thornhill reporting for Channel 10 Sports. McLeod was an all-state player last year. Well, Cincinnati relief pitcher Kent Tocolvi, who retired a lot of batters in his 21-year career, retired himself today. At age 42, Tocolvi retires as the man with the most relief appearances in baseball history. And Cincinnati manager Pete Rose had his attorneys in court again today. They filed papers to have his gambling case moved back to Ohio State Court. Baseball officials want the case in federal court. 
won't know when that decision will be made. But we do finally know who won the Anheuser-Busch Golf Classic. The sudden death playoff was suspended last night, but on the first hole today, Mike Donald hit this perfect approach shot. That set up a birdie putt. Well, Donald stood up to it, and he sank it, and he wins his first PGA event in his 10-year professional career. This is great. You know, I've been, you know, working a long time for this, and it's like I said, you just never know whether or not you can win or until you do. You know, you can always think you can, but you just never do, you know, until you win. And, you know, now I... Now I know I can win, and hopefully this will be the start of some good things. And with the win, Donald picked up $153,000. Well, the Alabama Deep Sea Fishing Rodeo wrapped up yesterday, as you know, and as always, they ended up by throwing in the rodeo present. The JCs all throw them in, then they jump in after. But this year, they ended it a little later, throwing in Rob, Roblin, and myself. First, see Rob kind of a klutz as he goes off. <laughs> then myself, well, I couldn't resist showing off a little athletic ability as I go off. <laughs> and on in, and uh, not a bad day. And there we are. There I am with my okay. watch in my mouth. But we had a great time. Uh, I'll give you a 9.6. Thank you All so right. much. We'll be right back. <laughs> Exotic alloys, complex designs. Today's automobile engines are minor miracles of efficiency and power, but at a price. They generate more of the damaging filth called sludge. Today, what's required is a motor oil scientifically formulated to virtually eliminate sludge. There is one, Haviland Superior Grade. You think it's quiet here at Food World late at night? For our stock boys, it's the busiest time of all. Food World stocks over 20,000 items, and it's their job to make sure that they're all put in the right place and priced at a discount. Can I help you, sir? Diapers. Here you go. Thanks. From the manager to the stock boy, saving you money is Food World's job. And nobody does it better. Come home to the best. Tonight, only on WALA-TV Channel 10. Everywhere I go, people ask me about the Mazda Challenge. I tell them the challenge is to find a better deal than the Mazda 323. It's over $1,200 less than Honda Civic. The no-deductible warranty covers you 14,000 miles longer than Nissan's, Toyota's, or Honda's. And right now, you can get up to $600 cash back from Mazda. The Mazda Challenge. Everywhere I go, people are talking about it. See your local Mazda dealer today and get up to $600 cash back on 323. Say cheese. Say cheese. Bacon, egg, and cheese, please. Say cheese. Double cheese at McDonald's, please. Good time. Great cheese, great price, 99. Next time. Add a little cheese to my sandwich, please. Good time. Good time. Great, great, taste. great taste. Just say cheese at our place. Now at McDonald's, say cheese and get a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit or a double cheeseburger for only 99 cents. Good time. Great taste. Say cheese. Of McDonald's. Coming up tonight on the News 10 Nightcast, should you be held accountable if your teenager commits a gang-related crime or if your child shoots another child with a gun? Nightcast reporter Jacqueline McLean explores this tricky issue. And Health Watch reporter Susanna Showers tells us the odds are stacked against cancer patients who are poor. Finally tonight, summer is traditionally the time when people pack up their things and head across the country. As Jackie D'Antonio reports tonight, a Missouri man stopped an eight-mile today as part of a trip back through time. Hank Shalafo and his mule team are taking a rest in 8 Mile. They've done a lot of traveling in the last three months. They left from Missouri, went to Florida, and are now winding their way back north. Hank has been homeless for 25 years. He built his first wagon a couple of years ago, and his life has changed since he hit the road. And the first time I got in my wagon, I went down the road, and when people started smiling and waving, I said, this is it. That's it. I said, I want to see the good in life. I don't want to, I'm as tired of the bad. Hank gets by on donations. He only needs the necessities. What keeps him going is the people he meets on the road. So many people are giving their address that I'm going to have to go get a full-time job in order to pay for the postage to send letters back to these people when I get back. Hank is now heading home to Missouri to build a bigger and more comfortable wagon, and then he hopes to be back on the road again by spring for more adventures. In 8 Mile, Jackie D'Antonio, News 10. 
That's our news right now. Wheel of Fortune is next here on WALA Channel 10. Join us tonight right after the NBC movie, When We Were Young.